Ah, and there we go. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's been a couple of weeks, so we're a little... Uh... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We crossed a few borders, if you if you know what I mean. We went from one state to the other. Man, no <laughs> doubt, no doubt. Um, <laughs> welcome to well, truth. Welcome to truth. I'll let you do the intro, <laughs> man. It's been a while. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, I'm going to open up with some prayer and All right. invite and invite our other friend here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Cause this is for everybody. Absolutely. God, thank you um, for mm. being here with us today. And um, man, there's so many times where um, we know you're here, mm. but for some reason we don't recognize what you have to say. Mm. And um, it's like we can be talking and talking and talking, but then yeah. you're talking and we're just talking over you. And, and we just yeah. ask that, that 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 would not be the case right now, God, that we would hear what you're saying and that we would operate on your pace, on your frequency. Um, man, we're just so happy that, that you're omnipresent right now and um, you're not far away from us, but you're near. And uh, we just thank you that yeah. nothing we could say or do could make you come any closer to us. <laughs> it's just huh. the fact that you're you're that kind of father that you're going to stick uh, closer than a brother. And so we just thank you for being that, and we just thank you with gratitude for for always showing us the way. In amen. Jesus' name, amen. 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 <laughs> Love it. Love it. Absolutely. Well, like Tim said, welcome to truth. We're just going to have a conversation and you're welcome to just listen and join in. And uh, let's hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. Amen. So uh, let's do it. And I think let me make sure I got this set up as far as nope, it's not. So the title that you and I talked about, bro, uh, two weeks ago was restoration, right? I think so. Yeah, so I figured, hey, say it. It. yeah, let's just keep it that way and let's just see where it flows from there. But that's our ongoing title. So <laughs> I'm Tony, that's Tim, as you can see the names. And today on Truth, we're going to talk about restoration. So, so, dude, how has it been <laughs> since the last couple of weeks that we've chatted? I think, I think the last time we went live was about two weeks ago, so... Yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of things. Hey, what's up, Jacqueline? Jacqueline's on. She wrote that. That's what's up. A lot of changes, and and you know, I'm I'm not gonna speak too much about myself, but I, I'm just gonna say that there's a lot of changes. Like all of you guys, you know, the the biggest thing that I think we struggle with in our faith is that we forget other people are going through the same type of thing with a different situation. Right. You know, and, and right. one thing that we have the hardest time embracing is change, uh, you know, or the other, right. the other thing, learn how to love, you know, that that's a hard thing to learn how to do because it's like, Oh, I love you, God. I'm going to go love everybody. Well then what, what happens when God takes all your self-righteousness out of the picture? Hmm. You know, you're left with yourself. Right. And, and then you realize, whoa, I don't really know how to love very well. I need to reformat or um, I need to reestablish what love looks like and, 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 and watch God love on me. You know, how are you supposed to go love on other people right. if you're not taking that time to let God love on you? You know, so the only mm. way we know how to love each other is if we're drawing near to God. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because then, I mean, think about it. You're just going to start kind of going into whatever your pattern is. Yes. Whatever that pattern looks like, that's what you're going to start doing. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and since he sent us Holy Spirit to teach us and lead us, if we're not connecting on an everyday level, we will revert back to whatever that pattern looked like for us. Right, 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 right. Yeah, that makes sense. 
Yeah, I get you know, that. It's, it's interesting, like giving, you know, giving is, is an aspect of love, but it's not love. You know, it's not, it's, you know, God is a giver, but love is so much deeper and more vast than just right. giving, you know? Right. And, and so it's interesting. Some, sometimes we like, oh God, I'm not doing a very go good job at loving. Well, I'm going to go back to giving. So I'm just going to give everything that I have. I'm going to give everything that I have. I'm going to serve here. I'm going to serve here. I'm going to serve here. And he's like, no, man, I'm actually wanting to teach. I want you to learn and I'm wanting to teach you a new way of love. It's like, okay, what's that look like? It's like patience. Yeah. You're like, oh, yeah, I'm not good at that one. So let's go to faithfulness. Right, right. Let's go to faithfulness, yeah. man. Let's, oh, dude, self-control. I, I got that in the last two yeah. weeks. Let's go to self-control. All it's the ones like, that we feel comfortable you know, with. Yes, 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 yes. And so, you know, it, <laughs> you know, you said you were talking about love there for a second, saying they're like, oh, yeah, we'll give. So the scripture that came to mind was for God so loved, he gave. So he gave because he loved. <laughs> he loved the world and he gave his son. Right. And it's like it, it came from a place of love. Well, the, you know, to, to go off of that, Tony. Yeah. You you can't give to love. You have Correct. to feel and you know, feel the love of God love. and then giving comes. Yeah. Yeah. It's all from love because it's like exactly. it's like the Lord's like, Yeah, you know what? I want to give too. Um, okay. I I love you guys so much, I'm gonna give. Because I love you so much, I'm gonna give. And yeah. not only that, I'm not gonna give what you think. I'm gonna give something so extravagant that it's priceless. I'm gonna give yeah. you my son. Yeah. And he's going to embody me in a man's yeah. body. <laughs> oh, for sure. For sure. For sure. But it's so cool. Like you said, I think that's the thing is like, we think uh, like love is like this, um, like almost like giving or something else or, or faithfulness, but it's like its own thing. Like God is love. Like, yeah. Like, well, that's the thing. All he the, is all that the, all the fruits of the spirit flow out of the first one. Yes. You know, yes. and it's just interesting. I was doing um I was doing some stretching last night, you know, with with a with a guide, you know, and, and they were teaching how to stretch and whatever. And you know, I've tried a lot of physical therapy and whatnot, but right. this one it was like really relaxing and and you know, God was teaching me and he said, Tim, uh what did he say? He's like, Tim, when did you think you could choose those that you love? Mm. Like, when did you think you could just select? I got like a select group of people that I that I love and everyone else. You go find another. Find circle. your tribe. <laughs> yeah, you go, go, go find your other tribe. Now, there's a certain amount of people that I can give my time to. Right, there's right. a certain that I have that I'm that I'm in not indoctrinated to but you know what no, I mean no. yeah, like yeah I'm tied to and right. there's other people I just I can't you know but at the same time God was like dude what if I build my church yeah I'm gonna look for that you know yeah it just just little flashes of that, you know, it's like, dude, we don't get to pick the best of the best of the best of the best. Yeah. Who to be on our team. Come here, baby. Right. You know, we don't get to like, right. When we're ministers. We minister to anyone and everyone. That's right. Are you going somewhere? Oh, okay. Yeah. Like um, I didn't, I didn't get to pick this little guy, but he showed up, you know, and right. So we just love everybody that we see. That's right. What's up, Otto? I didn't have my video on for a second. Um. Yeah. No. Absolutely, dude. So, it's, so uh, we just as have we go. To... Yes, and and you know it's interesting. It's like personality clashes and stuff like that that we encounter throughout business and family and friends and whatever. It's like. 
all right, well, you know, it's not really clicking. So just going to go ahead and X you out, you know, and uh, I'm not saying that happens all the time. But right. I'm saying in in our world, that's that's a worldly world. That's a that's a world view that we have. That oh, it's just not benefiting both of us, so we're just gonna peace. Right. Whereas right. God is like, hey, unless I separate what I put together, don't go yep. separating anything. You know. So it's just I really see Donald cool. Duck. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, it's cool, man. It's just cool to really, really be brought into the aspect of restoration through love. Yeah. Yeah. How about yeah, you? No, abso absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and that's what we we're talking about. Um, as I guess that's what it is. It's like, how could you have, we're talking about restoration. How could we have restoration if we have no love? <laughs> it's impossible because it really is. It's like the, 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 the Lord, he did what he did and then he rested because everything was done, but it was all done through love. So yeah. how could we rest if it's not done through love? You know what I'm saying? If it's exactly. always driving and trying to reach this goal, that goal and this, that, the other, it's like, it, I guess it's all done in vain in a ways, you know, because yeah. You know, I don't know. It's it's interesting. But um, I was thinking about uh, you were saying, let me see if I have it here. Uh, you said love. And I was looking up this scripture. You said, I will build my church. You know, I, I will build my church. And it's like the next line goes, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. You know how many times I've heard that and it was always taught that like like it it was always taught that we had to be defensive. Like and the gates of hell will not prevail. Like we're going to be good, but gates are there to prevent people from coming in. You know what that tells me? <laughs> Bro. <laughs> that tells me exactly what you're saying. <laughs> I will build my church and the gate, the gates will not prevail for yeah. we are coming. Well, here's what's interesting. If God is building his church, guess where it's headed? Heaven. <laughs> yeah. We're not trying to defend heaven. Mm -hmm. We're going towards heaven. And anybody that's Dude. not going towards heaven is going to run backwards or they're going to run out of the front doors. Exactly, bro. We are on the <laughs> offense, dude. We are Absolutely. on the offense, bro. But the offense that we're on has to come from a place of restoration and love. Yeah. You know? Definitely. You know, yeah, because that it has to, for sure. It has to. It has, that has to. to be the focus. Yep. It has to. Because if, if, if you don't go with a restoration of your soul, you will burn out. You will start taking offense to this and that and anything around you, what's going on, or why is God doing this? Why is God allowing that? But when you go with restoration and peace and all those attributes, all from love, you just understand, like, all right, God, you got this. I'm just following you. Like, I may not understand it fully, but you know what I'm not going to do? I'm not going to question you. I'm not going to go and turn my back on you. I'm... I'm going to set my face like Flint and go. Well, here's what's, here's what's interesting. That scripture talking about running the race with endurance. Yeah. You know, so many of us were like, I want to run with God. And it's <laughs> yeah. like, God, Jesus walked this earth. Yeah. You know, I think this race of endurance is like, okay, sometimes we sprint. Sometimes we stop. Sometimes we walk. You yeah. know, it, it, Sometimes and, and we I, lay in a hammock. Yeah. And and it's so easy, man, to to go grab that caffeine, man, and just <laughs> boom, 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 you know. And it's other for some people, it's so easy to be lazy, you know. It's it's yeah. like you either struggle with one or the other. You know, you, know, you either struggle with going too hard and being a busy body or struggle with being too lazy. So we've got to go at God's pace. 
Yeah, and I'll give you an example. It's like it's like you, we get so used to again what we want to do, our pattern, whatever it is. And so here's an example. I'm at Costco today, and and I go, I gotta go play, pay my membership. I'm gonna use my rewards, so I go do that. And I I I forgot when I walked in. I said, oh, let me just go and pay, and then just head out right away because the rain is coming. I can tell the sky and everything. It's gonna it's gonna be a downpour. But by the time I, 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 I waited patiently to do the membership and everything, then they, they uh, paid it. And for whatever reason, I just kept walking and I just kept walking around. I said, oh, let me go check in the store and, and, and just look around. So then I'm in the store and I, and I said, oh, I, I probably should. Uh, I'm looking at something. Next thing you know, I could hear the downpour. I was like, oh, there it is. Too late. I said, oh, well, I said, I'll just go outside and chill out. So I go out there. Everybody's doing the same thing. Everybody's got all their items. And it's like, oh, man, it's raining. Oh man, you could just see it on everybody's face, and they got rugs, they got cartloads of stuff, and and I'm watching everybody trying to figure out. They're all thinking, "What's going on? Um, how am I gonna uh, do this, or how am I gonna get get my stuff?" Hey, Rosina, nice to see you. And uh, so then I, I'm looking at all these people, and I'm and I'm like, I'm just gonna sit, grab a spot here, and and I mean, it's coming like sideways. The rain's coming sideways, thunder and lightning, and people are still like. Nope, I'm gonna go, and they're just going, and they got their whole car, and it just doesn't a lot unless they have somewhere to really go, go somewhere to be. I don't know. I'm not judging them, but it was funny to watch how so many of them were like, "I'm just gonna go," and they're just getting yeah, yeah, downpoured, yeah, yeah. and I'm just like, "Yeah, I'm just gonna wait." And not that I'm afraid of rain, because I'm that guy that goes out in the rain. And I love it, but today I was just like, you know, I'm just gonna chill here and watch people make decisions <laughs> yeah so i'm watching dude this thing came down for like 15 minutes solid no way and 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 some of these and some people waited but a lot of people just like i, I gotta go and it, it was to me what i was seeing was like like you said they're so used to going they just had to keep going even though yeah. like the storm and it's like sometimes it's okay to wait 15 minutes <laughs> <laughs> and not get completely soaked and you can actually still like rest in him and just have a conversation right. with him, maybe with each other because that's the other thing everybody's like looking around like <laughs> well it it's was a difference if it, it's a difference of culture too you know you see a lot of people like oh those guys are on island time okay whatever you yeah know. yeah um, and that's yeah. what i'm getting at because i'm obviously realizing we're in america we're at the big one of the biggest retail Jesus. places costco warehouse and everybody's like go 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 like, right 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 <laughs> you're right about that man that's crazy yeah, dude. You know, it's it's so interesting, though. I'm that guy that, like, I'll just go out in the rain because I want to be in the rain. <laughs> yeah, same here. That's what I was saying. Normally, I, I like am that. Job, and I was like, I'm just going to chill today. <laughs> no, I've I've been there, too. You know, that's why it's interesting because, like, we can't try to tell ourselves who we are. You know, right. I, I think I think that's something I'm being restored to um, is God reminding me that I can't tell myself who I am. You know, right. if I've submitted myself to him, that means he is the one at work in me. So it's like God's like, hey, go do this. I'm like, nah, man, that's not who I am, you know. Or like, you know, dude, why don't you ask me to do something that like, A, you yeah. know, what I'm really trying to say is that I'm comfortable with. Right. And like, for me, comfort can be something so insane. Yeah. You know, like. Like I was thinking about it the other day, and I was like, "Dude, my mind has been like in the mindset of a firefighter." Right, right. You know, I'm I'm 48 hours on, and then I'm you know 24 off or whatever. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. Like, or 24 on and 48 off. How you know? However. Yeah, it yeah. Goes. It's like it just seems like that that'll wear you down after a while. You know yeah. what I mean? And like, sometimes we're like that with God, dude, you know, I'm prophesying for 24 hours and 48 hours off. And it's like, yeah. sometimes like, you know, even eating meals, stuff like that. We get on this routine of eating, you know, like, Oh, I got to eat seven meals a day, just little ones. And, yeah, and it's yeah. like, it's like, we try to tell ourselves what we need to do. And it's like, dude, God's just been bringing me this restoration of saying like, Tim, stop telling yourself what to do, man. Like, I just need you to be open and listen to me and do everything I tell you to do every single day until I come back, until right. I return. And I'm just right. like, oh, dude, I can't believe how far off I've been. Not that like. No, no. Not that it's like 
bad, bad. You know right. what I'm saying? But it's just like you're like trying to convince yourself, oh, I need to get this done today and this done and this done and I need to do this. And God's like, or I have a plan and it's just to be with you. I'm like, oh, right. no, bro, can you pick that like, up? Exactly. No, absolutely. You know and, what I'm uh, saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so you know, it's just, it's just, man, restoration. What I heard, which is kind of, your volume went off. I don't know where your volume went. Check that out. Let's see if he comes back. Um, you see me now. Yeah, I can hear you now. I could, I saw you the whole time. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't hear you. <laughs> but now I could. I didn't know if maybe your battery was dying or, or what. Tony. Um, but yeah. Can you see me now? Uh, yep, I can see you and I can hear you. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, someone try to call me. If I ever go out, it's like someone's trying to call me. Oh, I gotcha. Gotcha. But I was saying it's not ironic, you know, that – that and I kind of lost my train of thought, but yeah, same. Up there. Basically, like the time up there, right? You know, oh, this is what it was. God was telling me before I got on here, restoration takes time. That's right. Healing right. takes time. And what's it do? It's not about how long it takes. It's about that God has to. You have to give something to God in order for Him to give something to you. You want to know that that scripture in James 4, draw near to God and he'll draw near to you? Yeah. Guess what? Check this out, Tony. This gotcha. is so simple. Okay. You already understand it, I'm sure. But for anyone that's watching that just, yeah. oh, man, I like, hear it. I want to be healed. I want to see life. I want to be restored. But, man, when's it going to happen? And right. How, when, when and why and all these questions. God spoke this to me, man. He said very clearly. Healing takes time. What does that mean? It means that he has to take your time. He needs mm -hmm. your clock. He needs your time schedule. He needs your planning. He needs everything on your calendar when he says so. Mm -hmm. We so draw near to him. He takes our time. And guess what? He replaces it with supernatural healing. Wow. Wow. So surrender. It is, you know, but here's here's what's interesting about surrender, Tony. Too many of us as believers do this. I God, we say, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, God, I give you all my worship. I will <laughs> give. You know, we're singing these songs, and then like as soon as the song is over, oh, dude, where's the coffee? Where's the pizza? You know, we're constantly going back into the old mindset. And so what restoration does is it's like, all right, God, I've got a lot to do. Hey, don't eat that. It's not real. He's eating <laughs> fake corn off the Thanksgiving decorations. Hey, but that was prophetic because how I know. often do we... <laughs> How often do we we go for the counterfeit instead of the truth? Exactly. Look. <laughs> it's eat not to one. eat. Yeah. So so here's what's interesting. What if God said to Adam? God said to Eve, don't eat of this tree because it's counterfeit. Hmm. You know, don't go there because it's not the real thing. Right. Right. It had nothing. You know, I'm just saying, giving an example, but it's like, oh, man, I need to go to the gym. Oh, man, I need to go to yoga. Oh, man, I need to go take this vitamin. Oh, man, I need to go see this doctor. Oh, man, I need to get this vaccine. Oh, I need to get this. I need to get this. I need to get this. I need to go here. I need to go to, I need, I need to go to Vegas, and I'll be okay. I need to go, you know. It's like, ugh. God is omnipresent, so he's wanting to heal you right where you are. And, and Tim, 
when you just said that, I want you to read uh, Angelisa Henderson's uh, comment here. I'm not sure if you could read it there. Yeah, so An Angelisha. Angelisha Henderson. Yep. Healing takes time. God transcends all time and walks back with us through the hurts and heals us. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. So it's like you said, omnipresent, you know, and and no, it, it's so good. It, it, and it's so true. Um, wow. You know, the, the scripture that I had, I'm not sure if it's time to share it now, um, but I'm just sure pop these comments on here as we kind of catch up here. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Angelisa, that's deep. All right. So I just want to make sure I get these comments. So when people rewatch it, it kind of comes in. Um, wow. Yeah. I love how you said that though. Hey, Umberto, how you doing, brother? Good to see you. So the scripture I'm thinking of um, when you talked about restoration a couple weeks ago to me um, was Galatians 6, 1 and two so i'm gonna post that here i think i already did uh here we go stop <laughs> he's pulling all this corn i was like stop. i'm going after all of this fake stuff um it reads this galatians uh uh six one and two my beloved friends if you see a believer who is overtaken with a fall the one who is in the spirit should seek to restore him in the spirit of gentleness but keep watch over your own heart so that you won't be tempted to exalt yourself over him love empowers us to fulfill the law of the anointed one as we carry each other's trouble yeah you know and well i gotta i gotta tell you uh Go i was reading in scripture and i can't remember exactly what it was i think it was in james but it was talking about you know letting your brother speak a good word about you versus yourself and okay. so here here's that here's where i think we can help that scripture come alive is just saying you know don't exalt yourself over him right so so someone's like hey man i'm struggling with this or hey man like I, I I can't I'm I'm still not restored to God in this way. And it's like, oh dude, I overcame that twenty five yeah. years ago. You know, exactly. it's like it's like like that doesn't help the situation. You know, right. it's interesting that so many of us you you hear in modern day Christianity, so many of us give our testimony, you know, not not like not like before somebody else is talking about their struggle. Like that's not a problem if you're just giving your, you know, testimony out in public. Yeah, yeah. But we take that same thing into one on one with people and then they feel like, oh, well, yeah. dude, how do I do it? And then we try to explain how we got restored by Jesus and it makes zero sense. Right. Because it's not the same way God wants to heal them. Well, and that's what I was just going to say is that we can we can say, oh, I went through that and all that. Like you said, as a testimony of encouragement that that I I I walked through that and oh, my gosh, like this is what happened. And I got out. I said, dude, I would love to walk with you through this. Like, let's, I, I, I'm going to I'm going to walk with you through this. Like, that's different because then it's saying like you're going to yeah. give your time for them to go through their trouble. And like, wow, instead of just saying. Yeah, he got me out, and da da da. da. Good luck with that. You're like, yeah, okay. yeah. Good like, luck with people. that. <laughs> but like, walk with them through it without getting like frustrated that they're not getting it. And, and right, 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 that. right. It's like, yeah, those are, those are the times where we have to humble ourselves so that we're not exalting ourselves over them in that situation, like you were saying. Well, the only time I think we're frustrated, right, is like when we've given them a formula. Exactly. Exactly. No. <laughs> hey, man. Because One, think two, about three. it. The only reason you're frustrated is because they didn't take your advice or what you said. So then you take it personal and you're like, oh, man, I'm done with that guy. That guy, you know, every time I give him, blah, blah, <laughs> we're just taking it personal. Well, here's the best thing we can do for restoration is, is walk with each other, like, you know, Tony said, and then pray for each other. Yeah. And and assist when necessary. But I think, you know, putting, you know, laying on a hands is, is something that we've kind of stopped doing 
it seems like with the elders and the deacons, unless you go to a very traditional church, it's like, right. you know, we're kind of in and out and yeah. all that jazz. But like laying on a hands is like transferring God's power and healing to another person. Right. And so what we forget, though, a lot of times as ministers as well, is that we need that same prayer. We need that, that same transfer to yeah. where we're transferring the love of God and the healing power Absolutely. You know, among one, one, hey, dude, stop. <laughs> oh, no. My kids are busting this house up, dude. <laughs> You're like, man. It's not for us to play with, bro. It's for us to stare at. <laughs> uh, my, mom. my mom's got so many decorations. You could call her Miss Hobby Lobby if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Hobby Lobby. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Rosina's going to be laughing on that one. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, it's so, so funny, so, dude. So, Tony, like, yeah, I know you've been through some restoration, and it, yeah. it's pretty funny because I, I don't think you and I have ever had a conversation about a formula of how you got restored. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, <laughs> I'm like looking at Jesus. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Rosina said, both of you are a blessing to the kingdom of God. I got to go off here for work. Rosina, right. bless you. You continue to be the light at work. Yeah. All you do. And she is definitely laughing at Mrs. Hobby Lobby. <laughs> And with that, she's gone. Yeah. <laughs> Rosina. Well, you know. Thanks for um, stopping by. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, man, bro, like, like I, I, I guess that's what it is, is, um, you know, and I haven't, I guess I haven't really dwelled on it too much. But maybe that's the good thing, is that I haven't dwelled on it too much. Well, well, here's what's interesting, Tony, you know. When you and I have had conversation about how you got restored, you're like, man, I just had a God just kind of clear my mind, you know, and, and, and here and then he said, I need you to forget the things that you that were church. Yeah. And, and I need you to just kind of blank canvas, know, man. Yeah, do that. And and what's interesting is the formulas don't give you hope, you know, but but I think what's kept us alive in our friendship and and this is just a testimony for others to stay yeah. alive walking with one another is that we've never been like do this do this you know like Ooh. do this do this do this do this do this do this we've never looked at each other and try to tell each other what to do right right you know it's like we've always looked at each other and said but god you know and and it seems too good to be true but it is it's too good for humanity to be true, but it's not too good from a supernatural point of view that God want to come in and restore you back to the faith, back to him, however it is. Um, it's, well, it's not because that's, that's who our father is. He takes us out of, our, out of our hurt, out of our pain, out of our destruction, and pulls us into his kingdom. And that's where the grace comes, man. That's where yeah. you really start knowing grace. Absolutely. And, and and what I'm sensing right now is you were praying earlier. Then you said, I'm going to call Tony, see if he wants to do a video. And I'm like, yeah, I could do it in like 10 minutes. So we did that. And we're like, restoration was already the thought a couple weeks ago. And now we have a comment here from Humberto, and I want to read it to you, and then I want to get your thoughts to maybe okay. what the cool. Lord gives you for him, okay? So he puts this. He says, I was a very hurt man. I'm still a hurt man, but I've been trying to put all my trust in God versus people. It has been helping. I constantly pray for a breakthrough, but at the same time, I'm constantly trying to own my mistakes so that I can better myself in being the man that God has programmed me to be. Yeah. Well, I got something to say about that. <laughs> I, I figured that I just, it, I was sensing it and I just want to encourage Umberto. Uh, so yeah, let's see what the spirit of the Lord is saying. 
There's a difference between restoring and responsibility. Okay. Being responsible is healthy, but only at the extent of you admitting that you're wrong. Because then next you have to recognize that you need a savior. But if you don't recognize the full gospel for your life, but you do for everybody else, then there's an error in the programming. You know, the full gospel is that we have sinned and we need a savior. And that savior wants to live in us and he wants to live through us. And as he's living through us, we become more like him and others become more like him. We have to build ourselves on that foundation. But the moment we say, okay, we need a savior. The savior's not showing up. I, I'm going to, you know, I'm still struggling with this. I'm going to work on this. I'm going to work on this. I'm going to work on this. That's in self-righteousness. And it's not in, the, in a sense of what the Pharisees would right. portray in public. You may not be somebody that portrays self-righteousness in public, but in private, I need to, you know what I mean? I need, yeah. to, I need to pick myself up, man. I need to do better, you know? And and so many times where that's a worldview that we were brought up in as children, you know, yeah. like we had to mature at a young age. We had to grow up too fast. We had to get our stuff together so we didn't bother anyone around us and we didn't cause problems in the street or cause problems at church or cause problems at our home. And, you know, I just feel, man, I just feel like God is wanting to just release you from that, bro. Yeah. He's wanting you to release you completely from fixing yourself. And it's like, yes, you have the tools and the resources to find healing. But guess what? God wants you to lay down those tools, lay down those resources, lay down that, that pride of you being able to fix yourself in your timing. And, and, and I just hear him say surrender, you know, and I'm, I'm hearing this, this scripture come back to mind. It's like, it says that, that, that all nations will speak of his name, that, all, that every nation will bow, every tongue will confess. And it's like, we have to confess that he is the Lord and that he will do what he started. And I just believe that is, is something the Lord is going to lead you into is you're going to start proclaiming, God, do what you want. <laughs> do what you will. Yes. I'm on your time now. <laughs> you're, I'm, you're not on my time, God. I'm on your time. And guess what? What <laughs> you say goes. Yes. Whoa. Yes. So, man, I just pray that God would bring healing to your mind, that you get off that timetable of hustling, and that you just pull into that, that understanding of, of Hebrews, of God's rest for his people. And yes. out of that rest, God will do a work through you and he will heal you and he'll Welcome provide for you and he'll sustain yeah. your family. Yeah. But you have to jump back into him. And it says, those who wait upon the Lord, they'll renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings like eagles. They'll run, they'll not grow weary. They'll walk and they will not faint. And so I just prophesied that over your life that you will run, bro. You will run, you will run, you'll walk, you'll not grow weary. Whatever the Lord says, you're on his strength from now on. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. And dude, when you were speaking on that, I, I, I saw for Umberto, I saw, and I know he knows, you know, some of this stuff, but sometimes we need to hear it in a different way and just stop hearing it the way we always heard it and just surrender it and just be like, wait a second. Okay. I'm trying to make up for my mistakes. No, no, no. Jesus already did that. <laughs> what are we going to do? Put him back on the cross? No, that's done. It is finished. And I heard whom the son sets free is free indeed. It's up to us to believe. So when the son already set us free, now it's our responsibility to believe what Jesus said. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that. I'm dealing with that. Oh, wait a second. Wait, Jesus dealt with that. Father, thank you that you've dealt with that. Thank you I'm no longer that man. Thank you that I've got my eyes on you. Thank you that I just, you know, just forgot for a second or whatever. But you know what, yeah. Lord? I know you're building me up. And then the other thing I heard for you, Umberto, was put on the garments of praise. Isaiah 61.3, put on the garment of praise. And I see joy coming into you. Yeah. The Lord wants us to live from a place of joy and praise. 
and glory, you know, like not joy in your not joy where you're at but joy yes who's with you yes exactly bro he said for you humberto were the joy set before him and he's saying now will you allow me jesus to be the joy set before you all the days of your life for i am wow. with you to the end of the age praise be wow. to god he is with us and Oh man! Oh well, man! I gotta share a vision. I had a, <laughs> I had a flashback. I was driving the the U.S. the other day, and and uh, man, I'm going. I'm driving through this cornfield, man. I, I think I was out in California or something up in Napa, and uh, close to Napa. Yeah. And there's all these wine, uh, wine country and whatnot, and and you know, it's like, man, I just I saw these scarecrows, and I was yeah. like. That's so funny that they, that like everybody thinks scarecrows are the answer to having like a good a good harvest. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's, it's interesting to me because I, I I had that vision for you, bro. I feel like sometimes we like post up in our harvest and we try to say like, all right, you're not gonna touch this. You're not gonna touch this, man. You ain't gonna touch this. Hey, this is my harvest. This is my this mm. is my family. This is my field. And you know what? It's like sometimes we get rocked, you know what I mean? Like we don't know how like we don't know what's coming in and we take a nap and all of a sudden we get we get smacked. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we just wake up and we're good, but man, our wife and our <clears throat> kids aren't good. And it's like, I don't know where you're at. I don't know if you even have a family, but but in a sense, like what I'm feeling is sometimes family is huge for you. And like the traditions that sometimes we bring into our family of posting up and you know getting our territory and marking our territory. Hey, don't come here. Don't mess with this. I got right. this, you know, like it's like sometimes that is selfishness of, Hey, I got this. I got this. Don't come this way. You know, I'm a man now. Like I, and, and this is something that I have dealt with. So yeah. That's why I can speak to this. Amen. Man, I've Amen. dealt with this so many years, man. And I, I am nowhere near clear Ooh. of this lesson, but I'm telling you, man, when we post up without saying this is God's, this is God's harvest, this is God's family, you ain't going to touch it, God, come down. When we don't let God fight for us, we're standing in front of him. And whatever we can do when we're awake, we can do. But whenever we're asleep, who's protecting us? And so I right. just believe whenever you are at a place of rest, you know, God wants to work and fight for you. And God, even Amen. when you're awake, even when you're standing, posting up, God wants to stand and post up in front of you and fight those battles for you. Amen. Amen. Wow. Amen. Yeah. No, I I, wow. I know. He, <laughs> that's so good. It's the truth, man. And wow. we were saying it earlier in the broadcast is that, you know, if if and I'm not saying Umberto's not spending time with the Lord because I know he is. But what I'm saying is if, if, if we don't continue to draw closer to him and hear his voice and he, and speak what he's saying in the sense of his the word of God, of truth, because he doesn't want us to live in, in constant hurt. He doesn't want us to say we have to figure out our own mistakes. That's not him. So what happens is, like you said, is if, if, if we don't keep hearing the voice of God and showering the word of God over us, then we will revert back to how we were raised or whatever was in our life. Like you were mentioning with family. I got to post up. I got to this. I got to because that's what you know. So what you'll always revert back to what you know. But when you start renewing your mind, you will learn a new way, which is his way and only his way. And you will not revert back to the old. You'll just move forward in the new. Well, that's that's why the restoration of mind is so simple, but yes. so easy. It's like. Renew it with the word of God, you know, like, okay, I can't hear God. Okay, read the word, man. Just read, read his new, word. Read, read the new covenant. You know, if you're That's stuck it. in the old covenant, read the new covenant. Get That's out right. of those get out of those war stories, bro. Get out of the war stories. Yep. If you if you're stuck on the battles and you're stuck on, you know, the punishment for for people that aren't living in the law, like get out of there, bro. Jump in the new covenant. You know what I mean? Like if you're if you're not doing well in the kids area at the pool, go jump in the deep end. It's not like that pool is non-existent. Like that kids area is non-existent. It's still a part of the pool. Yeah. It's still important. You got to have that for the kids. 
You Absolutely. Feel me? But it's like, dude, the whole pool consists of three different levels. You know, I mean, you've got you've got the really short area, got the medium, and then you got the place for the adults. You know, if if you really need him, jump into that new co- into that new covenant, man. Where you're just like, all right, I'm going in. I'm going under water, bro. Woo. The revelation that was that was awesome. Thank you, Father. But as you were speaking, that I saw that the shallow water, the middle water, then the deep water, and and we got to go in the deep water to swim. And when we swim, we're 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 you know, it takes it takes some energy. It takes you. You're swimming yeah. through it. Like in the shallow, you can just chill there with the milk of the word of God, right? But in the deep, you got to work at it and get revelation and be like, man, I'm going deeper. I'm going deeper. Then we get to a place where we start walking on water. No matter the situation, no matter the circumstance, you have restoration in the storm. Yeah. You have peace in the storm. You're like Jesus in the boat. He's resting in the storm, and he's like, we have, we ha- we can have that. When we're in him, when we're abiding in him. And that was that was the visual I just got. And um, it's not to say that we're not going to be back and forth to all those different levels. It's just how much are we willing to surrender to get to the place where, you know, we're walking on like, well, I got I, Tony, you and I got a mutual friend that we're always encouraging. And, you know, I'm talking about And, And, you know, a lot of times, God, I mean, I. There's just a lot of things going on in my brother's life and just, yep. you know, that that's just his world that he's in. And, and, and so I'm like, hey, man, God, give me a word for him. God would tell him, just tell him to look up. Yep. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking every single time, dude, we're looking at our own steps. We're looking at our own problems. We're not looking up. And it's like, oh, I have looked up. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about God. It's like, yeah. no, don't just think about him. Rely on him, dude. Right. You know, be like, you know, scream at the top of your lungs if you want, bro. Like, look up in the sky and be like, yo, God, like, I need you right now. All of a sudden, boom. Yep. Bro. Guess what? You may not have all your problems fixed at that moment, but guess what? You're recognizing that he's right there. You and know. And then it's a faith walk with him yeah. into that healing. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and what happens is you said, look up. Now I'm no longer looking down at the problem. That's yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> what you looking down at your feet and what you can right. do in your stride, and you know, the, the armor of God says that the gospel of peace is in in the shoes. So right. guess what? If you're looking down and there's no peace where you've been walking, Come on. guess what? You've been looking down at your shoes. That's you haven't it. been looking at the freaking king of kings. Right. You haven't been looking at the king. Dude, you might be a king Bro. in your neighborhood. You might be a king in your in your community. Okay, cool. Now what? Now what? Dude, submit yourself to God. Bro, the disciples are in the boat we were just talking about, right? They're freaking out. They see the thunder, the lightning, the waves, and all of this, right? They're freaking out. Why? They have their eyes on all of that. All but of it. None of them thought to realize Jesus is sleeping. Let's look at G. Wow, he's resting. Maybe we should rest. <laughs> what if Jesus? What if Jesus was just like that, man? What if? What if he was resting? Not 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 like not like lazy resting, but just waiting. Yeah, just for the right thing for the right moment. Ah, oh, dude. It's just, it's so selfless to trust in God. It's so selfless to trust that your father is doing something behind the scenes. It's so selfless, isn't it, Tony? Yeah. Yeah. Because you're Absolutely. not thinking about what you could do to make the situation better. Yeah. And, and that's my biggest problem. I'll tell everybody online, my biggest problem is being selfish and thinking that somehow through my experiences, through my understanding of God, that I can do this. Yeah, no. You know, I, I want to um, put his uh, comment he just wrote back. So let's uh, let's uh, put that on there, and, and I'll read it out for you. Uh, thank you for your input. Uh, uh, thank you for your input. Powerful. Thank you. I spent twenty plus years in the streets. I owned a lot of my mistakes and changed a lot of who I was for Christ and my family. I literally had uh, both get in for ten years. I'm not sure what that part is. I, I became a better son of God, a better husband and father to my children. I was a leader at a ministry and allowed God to use uh, me to help countless people. All glory to God. I experienced one of the biggest betrayals that any man can experience in a matter of three months. I lost my brother. 
So that's where he left it at. But he did say, I love you two guys and God bless you guys. Um, and he thought it was powerful what we were saying. So, um, yeah, you know, that that's that's where the reality of the situation is that there's some really heavy things happen to you. You yeah. know, I, and Tony, I think, I think you and I could probably say the same for both of us. <laughs> so, some exactly. really heavy things hit us. It may not be just like the other guy's story. Cause Tony's story isn't mine and mine isn't Humberto's. And you know, it's like, none of us have the same story. We just couldn't. Right. Not even my, not even my own siblings in my home. Right. You know, have the family. same story, you know, not even my wife or my kids have the same story. So we never had the same story. But what we do is we lean into God for each other's stories and we encourage each other in the power of God, the power of Christ, the power of his son to free us from those problems. You right. Know, because I, I just I. I don't know what I would do if I was in your situation, Tony. And I, I don't know if you know what to do if you were in Humberto's story, if right. you were in his shoes. Yeah. But we do know what we can do collectively, and that's press in to the creator, the one that says, hey, I'm the restorer of all things. Yeah, absolutely. And 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 to give us like um, a reference point, I'm going to go to The Last Supper and I'm thinking Humberto said uh, he hit, experienced one of the biggest betrayals. And 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 I definitely, you know, we I'm, I'm sure we all had some sort of form or fashion. And Humberto's, let's just say yours is times 10 the betrayal of mine. Not that that matters, but let's just say it is. Right. Um, the thing that I focus on when somebody says something like that is Jesus washed the feet of his betrayer. Like he knew Judas was going to betray him. Yet he still washed. And this is where we we go, wow, how in the world? And that's where we can learn and be like, wow, I want I want to be like that. He is our example. So maybe in the moment we can't do that. <laughs> maybe in the moment we can't like relate and we're like, dang, I want to be mad. That's just that's our choice. That's Tim's choice. If Tim wants to be mad at a certain person for betraying him for three days, that's Tim's choice. But at some point, Tim's going to know and be like, dang. I need to let that go. You know what I'm saying? Because it at the end of the day, it's just eating us up. It's just eating us up. Uh, the uh, the other no, I feel that. I mean that that's where I'm at right now. You know, there's yeah. Look at, look at this little one. Absolutely. Is Hartley there? That's what's you know, baby girl. It's like it's like this. It's like I'm back in Missouri right now. Um, yep. I'm definitely not comfortable here. <laughs> this is not comforting to me to be here in Missouri right now, but I'll tell you one thing. I'm back here for some healing. Yeah. I don't know the extent of that, but I know that the only way to heal is to kneel. Yeah. That's it, man. That's it. Is, is to go into prayer for people that don't understand you, go into prayer for your family, go into prayer for your friends, go into prayer for your finances, go into prayer for those who may betray you, pray that God would restore them before they betray. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, we just we have to be on the offense is, is something that, that Tony said earlier that's really just clicking back in my mind right now. We got to be on the offense. Right. Yeah. And, and, and go in and we go fight for each other. Right. And I think that's what it is. Like, that's the disconnect. We're thinking we put on the full armor of God to be on the defense. But no, we're putting on the full armor of God to be on the offense. And that's right. just something new that the Lord's been showing me the last month. And I'm like, this is cool, you know. And it's just warring that's in the cool. spirit. Yeah, man. That's a really cool thing. Yeah, man. And it's just because it, like I've always were taught the other way around. I always taught was like, you know, when when opposition comes, be ready. And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, maybe we just war again in, in the spiritual realm and we just fight it. Meaning every time the thoughts of lies and all of this start swirling around, we go on the offense and we combat it with the word of God, with truth. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, and, here's what's and, interesting about truth is that it actually sets the person and you free. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. 
Yeah, and no. you know, it, it's interesting. Anytime somebody's battling with a false truth in their mind, they're going to speak it out to everybody that cares about them because they want out of that false truth. Right. Uh, you know, people verbalize things that they're, that are bothering them. You know, yeah. and sometimes we think that they're stuck on that. Like they, they want to stay in that. And some people are just verbalizing something false because they can't get it out of their mind and they just need to talk about it. Right. And right. so I think that's where we come in with truth and we say, no, this is that this is what God says and what you're going through is real, but it's not as real as God. Amen. And that's why we wanted to encourage and pour into you, Umberto. And thank you for sharing what you shared. And thank you for being transparent and sharing some of those things. Yeah, absolutely. Because it says when we confess to one another, that's where healing comes in. Because like yeah. you just said, when we voice things out, that's how things get dealt with. Because then somebody can help see something. Hey, I want you to realize you, you might not have realized this, but you're actually believing wow. something that's already taken care of, right? It's already done. It's already finished. And help them walk through well, here's that. Here's something that I just had a revelation of. You think yeah. you're as powerful as the prince of the air without God? Do you think one <laughs> person is powerful enough to something you can't see in the supernatural that's coming against you? No. Right. That's why we're not to defend. You know, we don't defend. We just, <laughs> we walk we just, forward. We, we walk with God. We're, we listen. Yeah. God is fighting for us. And that's why it's a good fight. That's why I was thinking. It's not a good fight if we're trying to fight off demons all the time. Yeah. That ain't a good fight. That's exhausting. Exactly. It, yeah, you know? you know what's a good yeah, bro. You know what's a good fight? <laughs> a good fight is knowing opposition is all around and you're just constantly praising God. You're in the joy of the Lord, and you're just like, All right, Lord. We're going to go through here. We're going to go through there. Thank you, Lord, that you're with me. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's being showered with truth no matter what's going on around you and just still going steadfast and walking. Like, yeah, that's good. He's good. Well, and, and, and you know, the other thing, I don't want to just throw out scripture, just to throw it out. No, no. Man, I, I, I've been having so much of this just cycling through my mind. You know, I'm thinking about, you know, sometimes in, in this house that we're staying, you know, there's there's fear that's been let in here. I, I think it was let in by me at some point when I was a kid about certain things or, or whatever, but <laughs> there's, there's some fear, you know? And I was like, man, you know, it'd be nice to try to get each other out of fear. It's like, God's like, well, you just need to love more. Yep. You know, well, you know, like this don't make any sense to Why does this person talk? Like, you know, you go out in public. Why is this per person freaking out? Oh, they're in fear. They're on defense. Well, what do they need? They need more love. Yeah. Perfect love casts out all fear. And so that's, that's how we can be on offense with restoring one another is just love each other more. Yes. And that's all I was just going to say because you said, oh, I don't want to I I don't want to throw out more scripture. But another way of saying that really is it's like us saying, I don't want to throw out more truth. I don't want to throw out more word of God. <laughs> well, I don't I don't want you guys. I don't want you guys over there like. Dang, man, dude, he's hit me so hard, dude. I can't even go to school today. I can't even go to work because I'm getting hit with this sword. But that's all it is at the end of the day. We're like, right. oh, yeah, we do want to speak the word of God. We do want to speak truth because that's how we stay on the offense. And we live in this truth and we live on the narrow way and we follow him because that's what we're hearing. He said, hey, submit unto me and he'll flee. Hey, here's what's interesting. All. <laughs> here's, here's what I'm saying. Yeah. God said, God said he spoke the world into existence with one word, right? Yeah. Check this. I was sitting there, I was like, if we could access one word, what would bring this world into existence right now? If we just said the word love. Love. If we spoke love, if we lived That's the it, word dude. of love, guess what, dude? The world start coming back around. What was that movie? You can't handle the truth. You can't handle this love. Because, oh, yo. It looks so weak. It looks so weak to the hustler, man. It looks so weak. And we look, we're like, oh, man, I'm starting to have a heart again. Yeah. Oh, you know what I mean? I, I don't feel so tough anymore. Right. You know what? You know what feeling tough is? It's having a hard huh. heart. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. You feel me? Yeah. That's what absolutely. it is. It's having a hard heart. You know, oh, man, I know. I, I spend more time with my family than I do at the gym. Oh, man. God's <laughs> punishing me. Took me, took my rights away to the gym. Come on. No, he's giving you a chance to love on them so that there'll be closer unity with him and the spirit. Come on, oh, man. You God, God calls the greatest love. I'm going to go after the greatest. I'm going to go after love because God is love. Like, I'm just going to keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> and I'm talking to myself. And it's like, like that's that's where I'm at. Yeah. And it's like I want to stay in that vein, and I want to speak the truth in love. I, I believe that's what we did with Humberto. We spoke the truth, but we did it in love. And uh, and uh, yeah, Humberto, and man, we can't wait to hear the praise reports that are going to come out of your life. And uh, definitely catch us next time, or send us a message or something. But I believe uh, I believe you have been set free from all of that. And God's going to reveal that to you. Yep. God's going to reveal that to you, man. You're going to walk in so much freedom, bro. Just, you're going <laughs> to, you're going to have the joy of the Lord all over your body. You're just, wow. it's not going to matter. Like right now, if you look at me, Umberto, and I'm just going to testify quickly uh, about me. Is if you looked at me, you couldn't tell that um, I'm, I'm going through a divorce situation. That my wife said, I no longer want to be married. You're out of here. Get out. And uh, you can't stay here. You got to go. Like if somebody looked at me, they couldn't see that that's what I'm dealing with right now. Why? It's not that it, it doesn't bother me or anything like that, but I've given it to him and he's he takes care of everything. He takes care of me and, and I rely on him no matter what. It's almost been a year since she said that. And uh, but Tim could tell you, I've been this way. It hasn't been. It didn't take a year to get this way. Yeah, I was yeah. like this from that first week. And it's not that it's not because, oh, my gosh, I'm high and mighty. No, it's like Tim. One day Tim asked me, he said, he said, hey, what can I say for you about about that situation? And he's like, I need to know something in particular. I said, dude, I just I just I'm just praying that uh, she finds Jesus, that she comes back to her first love, because once you have that. Everything else falls into play, yeah. and it just really resonated with him. I remember it re resonated with you, and and it, but it, it resonated with me because if my faith and trust is solely in him, truly, then that's where the restoration comes for me. You see what I'm saying? That's where. Well, the here's 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 what I'm hearing out of that is no expectations of each other. Yes. You know, you have expectations for each other. Oh, you're in the spirit. Oh, you love God. Well, you need to live this way. You know. It, Right. We can hold each other, you know, to higher standards only if God has been that higher standard. You know, we're not holding each other to the way our actions, you know, we're, we're holding each other. Hey, man, you know, we we want we want to hold you up to God. We want to like Amen. we're hurting. We want to bring, we want to introduce you to the spirit of God. You know, it's like. That's what religion does is it says that you need to get your stuff together, man. Right. You know, I'm just getting lit. Just, oh, man, just thinking about <laughs> how many years I had to walk through that valley, man. I'm just expecting others yeah. to be the person that they said they wanted to be. Not the person yeah. that they were, but the person they said they wanted to be. Right. Right. And I'm just sitting here. I'm like, dude, without God's power, we are nothing. We cannot attain to the unity of faith without one subject being in the midst of all of us. <laughs> you know, God has to be in the midst of all of us for us to get to that unity of faith. Yeah. Our, our gifts do not get us to the unity of faith. That's right. But that's, that's why right. pastors, teachers, evangelists, prophets, you know, apostles, we're all bringing each other into God. We're not bringing each other into a community we right. are a community. That's right. We're bringing each other into the most high. And that's where we're finding healing and restoration. Amen. Amen. Yeah, no, so it's so good. 
It's so good. I, I'm going to read one more comment he just wrote on here. And I know you probably have to get going. I know I hear the kids getting ready to like, I don't know if they're <laughs> wanting food or what, but um, he wrote this. He said, I agree, guys. Uh, 27, uh, 27 years in a relationship with the mother of my kids wasn't easy. I'm only 43. Letting go more and more as the days go by is helping, but it's not easy. She was 12 years old and I was 13 years old and we we divorced two years ago. That's a long time. It's easier said than done uh, than to let go. I realized I had I realized I had more trust in my family than I did in Christ. And that was a smack of conviction to my face. Uh, trust me when I say I'm in a better place since that conviction. But it is uh, the process. So there you go, uh, Tim, because you had shared uh, the Lord was 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 giving you that uh, revelation about family for him. So that's awesome. He's uh, he's uh, confirming he's confirming what you said earlier that the Lord gave you about family. You know, well, it's interesting because I'm going through the same thing, bro. Not not the same story, but the same lesson. And yeah. the same lesson is I've had more trust in my family to get things together than I have. <laughs> you know, I had trust yeah. that God would take just make my family life the way it always was before. But before there was a lot of um, things that looked great in public, but in private, you know, it's like you're hurting. And so like, just because it looks great in public doesn't mean it's all right in private. And yeah. and so that, that's where I've learned that some, th some of those things that God's given me the chance personally to uproot is to be honest about things that are going on in public. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, yeah. and not, not, not just put on a face because I know I got to, you know? Yeah. Oops. Looks like I just lost him. I think maybe his battery was dying and that's okay. He may or may not come on, but we were going to wrap it up anyways. Cause it's been uh, an hour. Or so uh, Humberto, I needed this. Thank God. And thank you both. Yes. Amen. Humberto. We appreciate you. Thanks for jumping on. And, um, and uh, expressing those uh, concerns and those areas that you are growing in. And the thing that I will would, uh, would say is the process is this, because uh, the world speaks a lot about the process, the process, the process. And I do understand that. And I do understand what you're coming from and saying, because I've, I've been there as well. And something I've realized to kind of change it up a little bit is to keep believing in Jesus as one step that's it. The process is done. But the process that I believe that we're talking about, and maybe this will help you kind of clarify it for you too, is the process is of you uh, letting go, us letting go of that thought process, if that makes sense. It's like letting go of, of the way we always thought about a certain thing, you know? It's like that natural, whatever our natural tendency is, that's the process of letting that what natural tendency is of letting that part go. Like when somebody, for example, uh, somebody with road rage, somebody keeps cutting them off. Every time they cut them off, they flick them off and they yell and, and yell and yell. And that's their process. And what I mean is there it's a process of what they always go through, but they respond the exact same way. The process for us with the renewed mind. And, and I believe this is what the Lord is showing you is that. The process for you, Umberto, is now, OK, I'm no longer seeing myself in the old way. I'm no longer going to respond in the old way. I'm not going to respond the way I always responded. I'm going to respond in the new. I'm going to respond the way. And, and, and we're going to fall short, you know, at times. But when we keep coming back to that and saying, OK, no, 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 that process is done. I'm no longer that old guy. I'm this and not beating ourselves up when we mess it up from time to time. But just saying, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for that reminder. Yes, Lord, I don't I definitely do not want to go back there. That's done. I'm focused on you and I'm going to keep walking this path with you. Help me to forgive this person. Help me to, you know, you know, whatever it is that you're going through. And I believe that's the process. The process is of the mind. The process is saying I am being renewed. I am going to renew this mind by the word of God, period, end of story. I'm not going to revert back to my feelings. I'm not going to revert back to my emotions. I'm not going to revert back to the pattern that I've always done for 43 years of my life. I'm not. I'm done and over that. And 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 Jesus. <laughs> and I'm, I'm done with that. I know I've been, that's where I was at. 
And I was always out pleasing man instead of pleasing God. And then I realized I can no longer please man. And I came to the end of myself. I came to the end of the rope and I said, Lord, I'm, I'm done with all of that. And I just started, I forgave everybody. I was thankful. I was grateful. I was content. I just started praising God on a, and just being thankful. And just all of a sudden, man, just things just got released because I was no longer aligning my mind to the old. But now I was re, uh, I was renewing my mind to the new. I was renewing my mind to him. I was renewing my mind to the truth. I was renewing my mind to Jesus and just constantly reminding and, and combating every single thought with that. And do when it got here, then it no longer drops here. And then your heart stays clean. The way I look at it is um, like uh, when people uh, struggle with food and gluttony, a uh, 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 thought process comes. And we're like, man, chocolate cake. I want that chocolate cake. I want if, if we don't combat it here, then the, the desire drops from our mind into our heart. And once it drops into our heart, now it's a harder thing to fight because now it's a 50 50 chance that we're going to go after that chocolate cake and eat it. So now we're battling, battling, battling like, man, and man, I'm thinking about that chocolate cake. I want that chocolate cake. I'm desiring that chocolate cake. Now it's a 50 50 chance. Now it drops to your feet and now you act it out. And all sin goes that same way. And what I mean by sin is all of the old process goes that same way. It comes into the mind. If we don't capture that thought, like the word of God says, then it drops into our heart. If we don't deal with it when it's in our heart, it we it drops to our feet and we act it out and we move forward in that direction. So brother, just keep, uh, uh, keep uh, diving into the word of God. Keep uh, focusing your eyes on him and keep reminding yourself of his truth over you. Not, not what you believe over you, but his truth over you and what he says about you. And that should overtake anything that we ever thought about us. See, the, thing, the, the reason we're so hard on ourselves is because we know what we, we did. We know what we've been through. We know the hurts, we know the pains, but dude, he knows them too, yet he still says all these wonderful things about us. So I, I, I think we need to let go of us and grab a hold of him only and and let him keep renewing our mind and that's it bro so uh, i saw you wrote back uh i received that wholeheartedly thank you brother wow amen yes brother amen glory to god uh thank you father for umberto and anybody else that's watching right now online that uh father god that you have you have paid the ultimate price you've taught us in your word how you love somebody even though you were betrayed how you forgave somebody even though they did wrong to you. The Lord, your word teaches that constantly, that it's you. And if we would just dive into you and just keep going your way and not our way, we will get renewed in our mind and we will have this fresh outlook, new outlook of, of, of a new perspective, no longer looking from the place of hurt, no longer looking from the pl place of pain or what somebody did from us. We're no longer looking at others from that place, but we will now be renewed and start looking at others through the perspective of love, which is your perspective, Father God, that we don't see somebody that did wrong to us. We see a child of God that just doesn't know who they are yet and, and that we would take that responsibility and say, Lord, you know what? I'm not going to take that personal. Instead, I'm going to pour into this person, whether they 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 want it or not, if they want to hear it or not. And if they don't, that's fine. I'm going to still lift them up in prayer and see that releases us from the hurt, the pain, taking things personal. And, and we just lay ourselves. I mean, after all, he says, hey, you want to follow me? Deny yourself. So, Father God, we thank you, Lord, that in order to follow you, we have to deny ourselves. So, Lord, remind us daily to deny ourselves, to take up our cross of persecution, because you said that we will be persecuted for your namesake. So, Father God, help us to continue continually deny ourselves, take up our cross, take on that persecution, whatever comes our way, and be thankful that you already paved the way. And we just give you all glory and praise that we have an opportunity to follow you, Lord, in your way the only way, the truth, and there is no other life outside of you. So Father God, we give you all glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. Praise God, man. Love you guys. Amen. That's a great way of putting it. 100. Yes. Praise God, man. That's 
all glory to God. And I, and I appreciate you, Humberto, for jumping on and uh, everybody else that's on right now. Um, thank you. And if you could take the time to share it so that others can be restored back to the Father, that others can be restored um, in their walk, in their process, like Humberto said, their process that they're going through. And it's the process of renewing our mind. And uh, let's let us all get renewed, man. Let us all do that Romans uh, 12, 1 and 2. Let's stop conforming to this pattern of this world and what the world is telling us that we have to do and do. But man, let's be transformed by the renewing of our mind and let's follow him in all ways. Amen. And let's continue to walk uh, with each other and grow with each other and encourage each other. Amen. And love one another, of course. So love you guys. We'll do it again next week. Uh, we usually go on live every Monday. We took a couple weeks off because Tim was moving to a new area. Uh, but uh, we'll try to get back on our schedule of every Monday. Uh, not that it's an actual schedule, but that's what we shoot for every Monday at some point. Um, it'll probably be roughly around this time, like two or three o'clock. So anyways, you guys will get a notification. Love you guys. Umberto, love you, brother. And uh, God bless, man. Enjoy the rest of your day, dude. He's with you always to the end of the age.